YouTube show. It feels like everyone is hitting this moment of like extreme overwhelm. The -hmm. compounding effects of 2020 and 2021 hitting them. People are overworked, burned out is a word I hear a lot. And it was interesting you hearing you talk about how plants know to use only the amount that they need and how they are so intentional with what choices they make. Can you speak a little bit more to that? Yeah, I think probably one of the examples I was sharing is how that comes out in terms of competition, right? Competition for resources. And, you know, if you have two plants that are growing in soil and there's only so much iron or nitrogen available, or if you have plants growing in sunlight and there starts to be crowding, there is a competition for access to these resources. So Mm -hmm. plants need nutrients, water, and light to grow, Mm -hmm. right? For photosynthesis. But what's been fascinating to me about plants is that they are assessing how much resources that they need to support their growth. And they will go about the activities to acquire those resources. But once they have what they need to sustain their growth, they will stop competing. So they don't spend any additional energy. And, you know, I think about the ways in which we are conditioned to just almost hoard resources as humans, right? Um, Which means you're putting all this energy into acquiring something that you don't really need. But that means that's energy that you can't use something else. And I often think about the example, I am a mother, I have a son. And in my career, there were periods of times where it would have been easy for me to just keep pursuing the next accolades, the next paper, the next book, but then that's time I won't have with my son. And so I think the lesson is how do we get the resources we need? And then how do we use energy for other things as as opposed to continuing in kind of non-productive behaviors? And plants are very good at that um, in terms of assessing, this is what I need. This is what I need to get it. And once I get it, then it's no longer a necessity to continue spending energy in that vein. And I think that's sometimes how we do burn ourselves out, that we continue to pursue things without stopping to ask, do I have enough of what I need to have a successful and productive life? Or am I continuing to pursue this just because that's what I've been kind of conditioned to do in the way that our society uh, functions? Man, I'm so guilty of that this year. Like all of us, right? (laughs) I think we all are. And just not knowing when to stop. And you just reminded me, I wanted to read a a select, a a portion Mm. of your book in the beginning and I forgot. So let's read it now. Cause it's all about, (laughs) it's all about um, the sensitivity that plants have that I think we learn from. So it's in the beginning of the book. It's, and you, you write, we can learn a great deal from observing how plants live in their environment. Notably, the knowledge of plants, lessons from these organisms on being, shows us that you thrive or languish based on your ability to know who you are, where you are, and what you're supposed to be doing. Then you must find a way to carry on from the sense of self to your surroundings and to pursue your purpose, a task that may be challenging if you're in distress, compromised, or have a mutated, or have mutated from your ingrained, encoded, and adapted purpose. I just think that's very interesting that plants so innately can tune to what they need and their surroundings. And I think humans really lose that ability. Yes, we do. And I think part of it, you know, I think there are multiple reasons why we do that. Um, Part of it is that, um, you know, plants are very aware of being in community, who they're around, who they're in relationship with. Yeah. Yeah. And that matters because plants don't exist as solitary beings. Mm -hmm. Our human societies are so focused on this individualistic kind of notion of success. Totally. And so that gets us trapped in, I need more resources. I need more resources without asking the question, are there resources distributed in the community, you know, so that everyone kind of, and if I'm continuing to hoard, that means there's something that's not available for the next person. And so I think part of it is this kind of individualistic versus community-based understanding of, of our um, kind of success and thriving um, that plants have a greater awareness of. I'm sure there are some other parts of that. I think we also don't spend enough time in self-reflection as humans, which is the equivalent of plants kind of scanning the environment and seeing what's changed um, about who's near them, what's available. We often keep ourselves so busy that we don't have that time for self-reflection to even know when a transition has happened, uh, to know when resource has changed, yes. And now we just have TikTok. Oh yes. Just take every free minute of our freaking time, me yes. included. I love yes. TikTok so much and I've got to stop because it's, it's no, just, it- ama- <laughs> it's amazing how little time you can create for yourself when you just like 
scroll on TikTok when you're like peeing instead of yeah, just you like just sitting. get sucked in right and before yes. you know it half an hour is gone yes. oh my god it's just an amazing piece of technology and it's I think that much. sometimes we overwhelm ourselves thinking we need huge blocks of time for reflection but you yes. know even if we just took a few minutes in the morning to reflect on what went well yesterday, what didn't go well yesterday, and how does that affect what I plan to do today? I think that we talk ourselves into thinking that self-reflection and self-care are things that require a lot of time or a lot of money, as opposed to just saying, I'm not going to take my phone in the bathroom, right? And so that'll give me a few minutes to reflect or my son hates it. There are no TVs in the bedroom at my house because I was like, when you wake up, you know, you should just look at the sun, make sure you're breathing well, and then we'll deal with those kinds of things later. But I think the ways that we set up our lives and the constant access that we have now, right, Mm -hmm. by carrying a computer around in our hand that you can get sucked in. And I'm as guilty as anyone. I go on Twitter for two minutes and then next thing I know it's an hour later, right? A hundred percent. Do, 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 do,